Hello, welcome. In this short video, I'm going to answer the question: Why should we learn assembly language? Here is a list of top ten programming languages for embedded system. The ranking was published by HP Spectrum in 2019. Overall, for embedded system, assembly language was ranked top six among 52 programming languages. In 1950s and 60s. Many applications were written entirely in assembly. As processors become more powerful and compilers become more effective in optimizing compiled code, high-level languages such as C, C++, and Python has been widely used to enhance programming productivity. However, assembly language is not absolute. Here is a list of the most popular programming language based on jobs. Among all jobs related to embedded system, assembly is among the top five. Today, almost no employers are going to pay you to develop a large and complex application entirely in assembly. Most embedded system applications are written in high-level languages. The main disadvantages of assembly language are that it's difficult to develop, read, and maintain, and it's bug-prone. In addition, Assembly language is not portable from one type of processors to another. An assembly program might need to be completely rewritten for it to run on another type of processors. High-level languages, on the contrary, are portable and much easier to design and maintain. However, assembly language isn't just another language; it's the interface between the software and the hardware. Assembly language is very close to machine language. Thus, assembly language helps us understand what happens under the hood when a processor executes a program. Simultaneously, via implementing high-level control and structures, assembly language helps us understand high-level language better. Therefore, the first reason of learning assembly is that it helps us learn how a processor works. Assembly language describes what's going on under the hood of the processor. It provides required background knowledge for some courses you might have to take later in your curriculum, such as computer architecture, operating system, and compiler. The second reason is that generally, an assembly program not only runs faster but also is smaller than its corresponding program written in a high-level language. In embedded systems, we often use profiling tools to identify the performance bottleneck, and then rewrite. Often in assembly, the subroutine where computation speed is extremely critical. In assembly, we can manually select the best instructions and use the minimum required instructions to accomplish a task. Accordingly, in some scenarios, handwritten assembly may significantly outperform compilers. In addition. Assembly programs consume less memory, which is very helpful for cost-effective applications. The third reason is that sometimes we have to use assembly. Here I'm going to show three examples. First, some special processor-dependent instructions are not supported by standard compilers. These instructions are outside the standard instruction set used by compilers. Here are five example instructions. To support these instructions, we can insert these special instructions into C. This is called inline assembly, and here are two examples. These two C functions cause the CPSIE, CPSID instruction to enable and disable interrupts. The second example is startup code. Startup code is used to define the heap, the stack, and the initial values of the interrupt vector table. As well as the default implementation of interrupt service routines, it's possible to write the startup code in C. However, the startup code in C is not independent from the tool chain because the C code has to import compiler-specific symbols and directives. The third example is that sometimes we have to use assembly when we develop device drivers. Typically. We use assembly or inline assembly to access machine-dependent registers and I/O, or to control the exact code behavior in critical sections that might cause deadlock. The last reason of learning assembly, but not the least, is that it helps us write better software in high-level languages.
It's often that the best applications are written by roles who have mastered assembly language, or fully understand the low-level implementation of the high-level language statements they are chosen. For example, the low-level data representation and low-level translation of C pointers can help us better understand pointer reference and dereference. For a function, the assembly translation of parameters passed by reference or passed by value can help us understand their difference. Assembly can also help us understand why we need to declare a variable as volatile or static. In addition, at the assembly level, we can observe the stacking and unstacking process when a function is called. As a result, it's not surprising to know that a recursive function has a larger memory overhead. Let me give you two detailed examples. When building this simple C program, the compiler in KL reports no error and no warning. However, when we run this program, the output is totally unexpected, and it prints something is wrong. Variable x is 1, and variable y is negative 1. Thus, the comparison statement should be true, and the string of course, should be printed. However, when comparing signed with unsigned, the compiler implicitly converts the signed value to an unsigned one without changing any bit patterns, and then performs comparison assuming both operands are non-negative. Since negative 1 is represented in two complement in modern computers, the value of y stored in register R1 is OXFFFF. Compiler translates the C comparison to this assembly code. Here, the BLS instruction is to branch if unsigned lower than or same. As a result, the program prints something is wrong. You may ask, why doesn't the compiler convert the unsigned to signed and then perform signed comparison? This is because the rank of 32-bit unsigned is higher than rank of 32-bit signed. Before the arithmetic happens, operands are converted to data type with a high rank. Some compiler does give a warning. We should always fix the warning. First of all, we need to ask ourselves why we have to compile variables with different signs. Maybe it was a software bug and we should have declared them at the same data type. If we do have to make such types of comparisons, we should explicitly cast one of them to the other data type. Let me give you another example to show that assembly helps us understand high-level languages better. Suppose the initial value of the global variable x is 1. We have two tasks, a and b, which runs concurrently. These two tasks might be two interrupt handlers, or two threads if we have OS or RTOS. Here is the question. What's the final value of x? The answer is not that simple. At the end, x might be 4, 6, or 9. We know that these two C operations are not atomic. It's obvious if we translate them into assembly. In the assembly code, each task reads the x value out of the memory and then adds 3 or 5 to x and finally writes the results back to the memory. Basically, a sequence of load, modify, and store operations are performed at the low level to change a value in the memory. If the execution timeline is this, the final result of x is 9. In this case, we're lucky that the sequence of load, modify, store is not interfered between these two tasks. However, the execution timeline may look like this. Before the store operation of task A is executed, the processor pauses the execution of task A and starts to serve task B. After B completes, the processor resumes the execution of A and stores the value 4 into the memory. Accordingly, the final value of x is 4. In addition, the execution timeline may look like this. As a result, the final value x is 6. In this example, 
The assembly code helps us understand why x can have different values at the end. To avoid such issue, one solution is to use a lock to synchronize entry to regions of codes that access a shared resource. When one thread has entered this region, no other thread can enter. Here is the summary of this short video. As compilers have become very smart, it's true that you might not need to write any assembly programs in the future. So why should we learn assembly language? First, assembly language provides insights about what's running under the hood of a processor. And it provides important background knowledge for other courses such as computer architecture and operating system. Second, carefully hand-tuned assembly program runs faster and can be used for performance critical sessions to alleviate performance bottleneck. Third, we have to use assembly to access processor-dependent instructions, which has no equivalent statement in high-level languages. Last but not the least, understanding assembly helps us write better program in high-level languages. Thank you for watching. Please visit the book website for more information. See you next time.